Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to yet another uh, in what might be a series of uh, webinars about the Arizona State Film Incentives. We're really glad you could join us. Uh, we assume you were at the last one, and hopefully you'll learn some things at this one. Um, we're going to kind of just start jumping right into it because uh, we got a lot to talk about. So I'm just going to do quick uh, introductions about everybody that you're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, I'm Peter Kalanodi. I'm the director of Film Tucson. We're the uh, film commission for Southern Arizona. Uh, Blake Eager, if you would raise your hand, uh, he's with, uh, he's the co-founder and CEO of Train Like a Pro. Uh, next up, if you would raise your hand, Darcy Mentoni, an independent lobbyist. It's been helping us uh, navigate the world of uh, uh, incentive uh, bills. It's been really helpful. Uh, Tom Moulton, if you would raise your hand, please. He's the executive director of the Southern Arizona Attractions Alliance. Next up, we have Mr. Randy Murray of the Arizona Film and Digital Media Coalition. He's actually out in California right now on set. So if there are any technical glitches with Randy, it's nothing personal. He's just uh, running around doing what he does. Uh, and last but certainly not least, Edgar Soto, a community leader who's been helping us uh, from the get go. So uh, that's the group. And uh, we're gonna just kind of go through a quick agenda here. Uh, the first thing I want to do, this is kind of corny, but I'm going to do it. I want to raise a glass, even though it's just water, to all of you who attended the last webinar and wrote the Appropriations Committee. They heard you. I, I, and I'm not just saying that. It's not hyperbole. The minute the uh, testimony started on the uh, on SB 1708, the film bill, uh, uh, Senator Livingston uh, immediately jumped in and said, I have gotten dozens and dozens of letters of support from all over the state for this bill. And I knew I just was smiling really broad. I knew it was because of all of you and all of what you did. So applause, applause, raise of the glass to all of you guys. Uh, that's what we're here to do. That's what we're trying to do. We want to get more of this out. So thank you all so much for uh, doing that. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we wanna talk about the status of both bills and what happens next. So just a, a quick refresher for everybody who's watching. Um, it's SB uh, 1710, which, is, uh, which covers uh, bringing in sporting events, tourism and filming. And then SB 1708, which is just filming statewide. Uh, so the other bill is Southern Arizona, the, uh, and 1708 is the whole state. So um, we're going to have Darcy kind of walk us through what happened with both bills and how that went and what happens next. And uh, Darcy, take it away. Thank you so much. So um, SB 1710, which is the the Sports, Film, and Tourism Authority was heard two weeks ago in Senate Appropriations, and it was passed unanimously. Um, we have since had discussions with members of the Senate, um, and it has been requested that, that Gila County and um, Yuma County are added into the authority as a floor amendment when it goes to the floor of the Senate. Um, the other bill, SB 1708, was heard in appropriations this last Tuesday, and it was hotly debated. There were members of the Free Enterprise Club and ATRA, which is the Arizona Tax Research Association, um, that brought up their concerns with the bill. It got very passionate, and ultimately the bill um, was passed through appropriations. Um, next, it goes to the floor, um, and so you need a majority of the 30 members of the Senate, um, so you need 16 votes to get it passed on the floor. And when bills are in Arizona, when bills um, are heard on the floor, they need to be read three times, and then they need to go to Committee of the Whole which is another read on the floor, and then they have to go to a final read. And so they're actually read five times and they have to pass every one of those times. Um, 
assuming that we get the votes in the Senate, then the bill will move over to the House. Actually, both bills will move over to the House, and then we go through the same process. They'll both be assigned to appropriations, and then they'll have to go to a floor vote. Um, so there's, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done, um, but they're they're both looking um, really positive and and. You know, if we can keep up this momentum and keep the naysayers from being louder than the film community, then I think we've got really significant potential to get both of them passed. Yeah, I'm here. I'm muted. Sorry, everybody. Uh, Blake and Edgar, you were at the, uh, you gave testimony for SB 1710. Uh, do you have any thoughts uh, about all any of that? I'll start. Uh, yeah. From my point of view, I think we all took away something that was very positive from that meeting and from um, from that hearing. As we test uh, as we testified throughout the process, and we had to wait through that today so they could hear our testimonies. I left with the thought process that they were overly ecstatic with what we presented, and and the enthusiasm that they had was substantial compared to everything else they heard that day. Yeah, I, I would agree. The one thing that I think that <clears throat> resonated with the appropriations committee is that when it all comes down to it, this is a positive for, for economic impact for our Southern Arizona and for potential quality jobs for the area. So I think when they see what the potential can be and if we can set up the dominoes in a way where we're ready for this, hopefully a flood of, of, uh, of business and industry that it's going to we're going to be in a good position to support it. And the bottom line, people will have good jobs. And I think one, one other positive thing to take away, and Darcy mentioned it earlier, is that after that, we had um, two senators come up to, to Darcy and ask to have Gila County and also Yuma County be included into the bill. And I think that's a huge positive moving forward. Great. And Darcy, uh, remind me, we don't have a date yet on when it's going to be on the Senate floor, when it's going to be heard on the Senate floor. We're waiting to find that out. Yes, yeah, so this coming week is what we call crossover week. Um, it's where all of the committees are canceled for the week so that they can get bills through to the other chamber. So I imagine that they will both be heard next week, but they have not been assigned yet. Okay. And what would you say typically is it? Does it have does it happen on a certain day of the week or it's arbitrary? It could just be at any time. Yeah, they've got hundreds of bills that they've got to get through the Senate and over to the House by the week after next. And so they sometimes have floor sessions multiple times a day. They work late into the night. They just try to get everything voted on and passed over to the House. Got it. OK, great. Well, um, I'm going to skip ahead to uh, because this kind of ties in uh, because this is going to the Senate floor. I wanted to just quickly go over uh, all of you that got the uh, e-blast uh, earlier this week, kind of a, an emergency one. Uh, we put a number of tasks in there and um, I'm going to just stop at a, a number two, task number two here, because uh, task number one was to have all of you thank the Senate Appropriations Committee. I think you've all done that by now. Uh, task number two was to write all 30 senators. Uh, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about why that's important. Um, what we're doing is, and Darcy or anyone can step in on the panel here uh, to correct me if I get it wrong. We're, we want the 30 senators to hear from all of you in the community and to urge them to vote yes on these bills. So this is another chance for you to tell your story uh, as, as briefly as you can, and maybe even as personally as you can, to just talk about how film brings jobs. Uh, uh, those of you, if you're still referring to the, uh, the e-blast we had last time, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're starting up a little grassroots uh, effort where we urge all of you to share your Arizona film job story on social media. Those of you that are active on social media, we want you to tell your stories uh, the opposition to this bill is sort of rooted in some ideological and some cultural differences. And we're just trying to make up more about uh, the nuts and bolts of filming and the, 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 the cost that the money that comes in and the economic impact. So tell your story. If you're a restaurant owner, 
uh, talk about how filmmakers come in and spend lots of money in your in your restaurant. If you're a carpenter, uh, tell the story about how you got hired on a film shoot and were working day after day on this film and how wonderful that was. Uh, and if uh, if any of you sports lovers are watching for uh, or uh, someone involved in tourism, now's your chance to talk about SB 1710 and what those industries contribute to our economy as well. Uh, did any anyone on the panel want to uh, talk about anything on that end? No? All right. <laughs> wow, silence. All right, so task, I want to just talk about test three. I got a lot of questions about this one. The request to speak account. Um, if you've never been to the state capitol, when you walk up to, uh, you get inside, there's these, uh, these computers that you sign up on. And you, it's to, so you can either A, testify uh, against or for a bill uh, that's going to be heard in one of the committees, uh, or you could just register your dissent or your support of a bill. You don't necessarily have to speak, but it's still called a request to speak. So I kept getting calls from people saying, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go to Phoenix to speak, and now you guys have signed me up. Um, you don't have to speak. It's just really just, a, you, we're just creating an account for you. Uh, and we're going to do it for you, so that way uh, uh, you don't have to go anywhere or do anything. We're doing it for you, and so as we said in the e-blast, all we need is your name, email, your address, and I believe we asked for a phone number. I'm trying to remember if it actually asked for that or if we just dreamt that up, but a yeah. lot of you responded, and we got you all signed up, so thank you for doing that. Uh, I also got some questions, uh, people saying, why, hasn't, why haven't I gotten any response for my account. And uh, we're actually not going to start creating those accounts, I think, until Monday or Tuesday, Darcy? Yeah, I'll, I'll work on them when I'm up at the Capitol on Monday. So uh, those of you that want to sign up for an account to just register your support for these bills, keep sending us your info, specifically me, send me your info, and uh, we'll get that uh, put in. So can I, uh, can I mention yeah. something, Peter, about the request to speak account? So yeah. when the legislators are voting on bills, they have computer monitors in front of them. And what they're seeing is the request to speak system. And so in the system, you can either give a thumbs up for support, a thumbs down for oppose. Right now, there are about 100 thumbs down, thumb, thumbs down in the system. So that's what the legislators are seeing while they're voting. We need at least an equal number of thumbs up. So just, you know, just getting those accounts set up and registering your support. So while the members are voting, they can at least see that there isn't more opposition than support. That's exactly it. And uh, I know it might seem intrusive that we're asking for your address and everything, but it's really the information that they use to sign people in. So uh, we're not gonna abuse it and you know sell it to Amazon or anything. We're just trying to get more people registered. Uh, so that way there's more thumbs up that the senators are seeing. So um, any comments from the uh, panelists about those tasks that uh, we just went over? Seems like we covered everything, yes. All right. Uh, looks like we're on to uh, everyone's favorite part. Questions from the public. And we've got quite a few already uh, kind of popping in. So uh, I'm gonna read these. Uh, this one's a little long, so bear with me. In discussing the next steps for SB 1708 with various legislators and labor and workforce policy committees, would the challenges with some of the reluctant legislators be overcome with a simple amendment requiring a minimum percentage of Arizona residents be hired for each tax credit. The questions of how many jobs for constituents uh, that Livingston raised, for uh, Senator Livingston raised, for example, could be simply answered with ongoing reports to concerned legislators. What does the panel think? Randy? Yeah, I'll take that. You know, so there was a big discussion about that. Uh, and it's sort of backfired in the past and in other states. So we decided to address that by putting an incentive in. So instead of requiring so many, we you get uh, more um, money in your refund by the more people you hire. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, 
It sounds good to me. And, and uh, uh, Paul Stapleton Smith sent that question in. Paul, let us know if, uh, if you need a follow up to that. Uh, you're welcome to keep asking questions, all of you, of course. Uh, we're going to go to the next one. This one's kind of important. Uh, Austin is asking, uh, when we write the senators, is it okay to BCC back copy the full list so we can just send one email? Uh, I think it's fine. I think a lot of people did that before. Uh, if you got the last e-blast, I put a PDF in there with all 30 emails. So all you have to do is just copy and paste. So uh, you can do it all in one email. It's just fine. The, the most important thing is that they hear from you. That's really the number one thing. Uh, Randy? Yeah, I just want to say uh, you might want to take the time to personalize your senator's uh, message. The, the senator that represents you, you know, you might take a moment and say, I do live in your district uh, on that one. Uh, you know, black, eat, you know, cotton blasting everybody else with the same message i think it's fine okay i think that's actually a great idea the personalized message to the senator who represents your district great idea uh let's see so um uh elisa cota francis hello elisa it was good to hear from you uh, my question is uh what the opposition position is so that we can make a healthy argument and a reason why we support it so um I'm actually working on this with the panel right now, Elisa, and I, my plan was to try and have it before the webinar, and uh, we've just been kind of slammed with a million things, but um, I'm going to uh, uh, create a, a list of arguments that we hear against these bills and the counter arguments, and so um, I'm just going to give a few just off the top of my head. Um, those of you that watched the testimony on Tuesday for, the, uh, for 1708, um, and this is an argument that we've heard for decades. Uh, Randy, I know you've heard it a million times. It could be cited in your sleep. Um, and I don't want to get political here, but it is a political argument. Um, the argument is that film incentives help a liberal industry, that the film industry is liberal and it's putting money in the pockets of liberal filmmakers. I'm not going to take sides on that. But what I would argue, this is my counter is, the film incentives bills in any state are, uh, they're not targeted to conservatives or liberals. If Michael Moore, who's a liberal we all know, wants to make a film and get incentives, he can. But so can Clint Eastwood, a well-known Republican Hollywood filmmaker. So can Tim Allen. I don't think he produces or directs. He's just an actor. But you get what I'm saying. Uh, Jerry Bruckheimer, uh, Michael Bay. There are so many conservative filmmakers and they can all apply for this. Uh, uh, there's a, a, a faith-based conservative film company in Scottsdale, Arizona called Pure Flix, P-U-R-E, Flix, like Netflix, Pure Flix. And they just produce content that is uh, religious and faith-based and conservative. Fantastic. They're in Scottsdale, they can apply when they make their films, when they produce their content they can apply for the state incentive as well. So it's, it's, it's not a conservative uh, uh, liberal thing by any means. So that's one argument that I know of. Did anyone in the panel have one they want to address? There's so many of them. No, I think right now, if we can put that list together and send it out is going to be the most helpful. And then that way we can answer any questions coming back to us as well. But having the argument and counter arguments, it's, it's very important for us to be educated and well versed in these things. Sure. And if any of you uh, watching right now, uh, my email address is uh, pretty handy and uh, a lot of you have reached out personally to me. You're welcome to send me uh, if you if you encounter a an argument against these bills that you can't address send it to me and we'll debate it and figure out you know, a good answer. Some of these we've probably heard already, but uh, uh, we're happy to, to, to work on that. So we'll get that out on the next e-blast for sure. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna kind of skip ahead. Well, you know what? That's all the questions for now, wow. Uh, I will say because we had the, the, uh, the bigger uh, webinar last week with the most amount of questions, we kind of figured this one would go a little faster because we kind of covered a lot of ground in the last one uh, that doesn't need to be covered too much from here. Um, I guess, uh, does anyone on the panel have anything they'd like to address about either bill that they just want to make sure that the, the viewing public hears about? 
I think one thing too, Peter, if you if we've got a second, um, yeah. that SB seventeen ten does very well to partner with SB seventeen oh eight is that the Southern Arizona Sports and Tourism Authority is able to buy chunks of land that can be utilized by the film industry throughout Southern Arizona. So that's a huge thing as we're moving forward to give us the facilities and land that we would need to not allow to not only allow film to come here, but to be to create a sustainable uh, future for film to stay here. Fantastic. Um, anyone, any other questions? I'm kind of looking here at the sidebar again. Oh, here we go. Um, um, I can answer that question from sure. Kristen Spinning. Um, it, it typically takes a week. I imagine that both bills will get through the Senate and onto the House next week. Um, and one other thing, I just wanted to mention. Um, so we had we had talked earlier before the webinar about how often we should have these webinars. And so um, I think what we've decided is every time there's significant movement, then we will jump on and keep everyone updated. So um, if it doesn't get through that the the Senate next week, then there probably wouldn't be a webinar. But as soon as it does get over to the House, we would jump on and let everybody know what the steps next steps are and how they can be helpful. Sounds good. And and as I mentioned, my email address is is pretty accessible. So please, any of you watching, if you have questions, call or email me anytime. Uh, if I don't have the answer, one of these brilliant other people on the panel will have the answer and uh, we'll get you an answer as fast as possible. Uh, we're just trying to give you the info that we have and uh, making sure that we all work together. But uh, in the meantime, just uh, make sure that you write those 30 senators because that's the important thing right now. Uh, of course, thank the Appropriations Committee uh, for uh, voting the way they did on the last uh, uh uh, bill that uh, was heard in that committee, but now that it's moving to the Senate, we want to make sure that the all the senators get their get your support. And please keep going on social media and telling your story. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Blake. Uh, Blake just put my email address in the uh, uh, the chat room there for you. Uh, but keep going on social media and talking about what what uh, these bills will bring to Arizona and our economy and make it about dollars and cents, make it about economic impact and you know, make it personal. If, you're, if your small business is thriving because of an incentive or an industry that's uh, contributing to, to the economy, then make sure that uh, people hear about it because we need to take that narrative and make sure it gets out there. Um, any other questions for the good of the cause? We're kind of coming up on uh, this was the fastest webinar. <laughs> Blown away. I thought we'd have a million more questions, but we did cover a lot of ground in the last one. So we kind of figured this one would be faster. Uh, anything from the panelists? Otherwise, I think. Uh, we'll go. A few minutes. Go. I think, oh, uh, Peter, you did cover that the, this was right. recorded and the first one was recorded. And uh, were you going to mention um, not only in writing as a follow up, but also just, just now? That, that everyone will have access to both of these webinars. Thank you, Tom. Uh, yes, so the last webinar was recorded as is this one being recorded. Uh, the last one is on Film Tucson's YouTube page. Uh, so just uh, go to filmtucson.com and click on our YouTube page. It's uh, the little icon at the bottom of the page and you can watch the last webinar. This one will be uploaded uh, shortly, maybe this weekend, uh, and uh, you can watch to revisit and get information. If someone you know didn't get to attend these and needs to watch the past ones, they can do so. Uh, but we have gotten another question here that I'd like to answer. Uh, which members of the Republican caucus and which members of the Democratic caucus are most likely to vote with us in the House and Senate? Darcy, I'm going to imagine you're the expert on this. Do you have the uh, mouse? Thanks. Yeah, I think that um, the moderates in both parties will probably be our biggest supporters. So what we heard in committee is there was in the Appropriations Committee on 1708, 
there was one mem there was one Republican member that was opposed because she was afraid of bringing people like Harvey Weinstein into the state. And she didn't like how um, Hollywood pulls out of states when they don't like their political decisions. So she was a no. Um, she is also on the extreme end of the Republican Party. Um, and then among the Democrats, there was a Democrat that voiced his opposition, even though he did ultimately vote yes, because he doesn't like using tax money that could go to education or social service programs for anything except for those things. So I think that you are going to see the, the, the more politically extreme members of the parties um, be in opposition where we are likely to get the moderates or the more moderates. There's no such thing as a moderate anymore, but the more, the more moderates. <laughs> okay. So to answer your question, Paul, we don't have specific names, but I think you can just tell from past voting records who the moderates are. Would you say that, Darcy? Is that Yes, I do. I also, um, this is going to be an interesting bill because it's going to be a bipartisan vote. And so everyone is really aware of that. Most things pass or fail along party lines in the legislature, and it's not the case for this one. Um, and so but that's actually going to really help us because if you weed out, you know, the three or four senators on the extreme right, um, and the three or four in the extreme left, we still have the bulk of the members. So as long as, long as we can keep the moderates happy, um, we'll be fine. Great. Uh, and, so and the last question, um, Peter, is you just need a simple majority. So we just need 16 senators over in the Senate and you need 31 members over in the House. All right. Uh, I do wanna answer the question right above that. Um, um, sorry, it's actually above that, uh, because uh, we need an answer to this. Who will be overseeing the buildings of studios and who will have the final say so? Uh, Randy, would you like to tackle this one? Sure. Uh, you know, it's all, uh, it's all private sector money that's building the studio. So those, those investors and those developers will oversee their own thing. They'll be making decisions based upon their business model and what they think makes the most economic sense for them. Uh, once they're finished, the ACA will then review and decide whether or not they qualify for the incentives uh, when they uh, uh, bring a project in. The, the, the ACA will be qualifying on a per project basis, not on a facility basis. Uh, great. And if you need a follow up uh, for that, uh, Rob, uh, please voice it. Uh, there's a question we uh, skipped and sorry, I missed it. Uh, and this is from Elisa again. Uh, and I can take this one unless someone else on the panel wants to. Has there been a concerted effort to reach out to biz owners, as you mentioned, like restaurant owners, not just film crews and filmmakers to support and speak out? In the past, this has not happened. Um, I can say, I can answer both those questions. In the past, it has happened, uh, at least from Film Tucson, we're part of the tourism office. And so we have lists of all the restaurants and hotels and attractions throughout Southern Arizona. And so in the past, when we had film incentive bills, we reached out to the restaurants and hotels and so forth because we needed their support. And they spoke up. Uh, because they saw the economic impact that filming and other industries brought to their small businesses. So in this case, same thing. Um, I have the, uh, the crew list for uh, HBO, and I know what businesses they utilize and spent money at, and I've reached out to them to let them know, we need you to voice your support. So just uh, yesterday, I think it was, I got an email from a dry cleaning company in town that uh, HBO spent lots of money at their uh, business. So they, they, uh, I, I sent them an email. Uh, I did a, a group email and they, they reached out to their senators and, and told them, 
HBO came in and spent a lot of money at our business and we were really hurting because of COVID and uh, a big film project saved us. And so all the senators got that message. So um, yeah, we are reaching out to the different businesses. Uh, I know on my end, I'm doing that because we have those connections to the restaurants and hotels. Uh, the two hotels that primarily got used by HBO especially made sure to talk to their senators because uh, they, they really, uh, the, the uh, tourism industry was really hurt during the shutdown uh, due to COVID. And so they wanted to make sure that uh, the Senate heard about the miraculous story of their businesses surviving uh, because of HBO coming in. Uh, put that dry cleaner message in a social blast. Um, I will ask them if we can do that. I'm sure they'll say yes. Any other questions? I think uh, we're not getting any emails, anything, any, any, uh, anyone else on the panel for the good of the cause, want to speak unless uh, we get any other questions. Peter, yeah, you had indicated early on that the communications could possibly expand into some of the other tourism segments. So um, we will be including our 120 members and the Attractions Alliance. Uh, many of those are members of Visit Tucson. Uh, so it's not like they have been eliminated, but they will be uh, reinforced. Um, with with the tasks, especially when it uh, when it comes to the the sports and tourism side, but of course uh, a lot of the locations um, that the movies do pick are 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 just not old Tucson uh, from the past. There are many uh, ranches that have been dude ranches in particular that have been used at uh, national and state parks and county parks such as Tucson Mountain Park. Um, lots of stakeholders in that area utilize those facilities on a regular basis. Tumamak Hill probably comes to, to mind. And uh, I think all of the, the more and more folks know um, how careful movies are. And we did that last at the last webinar. Uh, Peter mentioned how um, the folks really that filmed there in HBO really took uh, special care about uh, what they could do at the national and the state and the local parks. And uh, so I think the more we can get that message out, the better. Fantastic. Anyone want to add anything? We've got another question coming in. I time. can take that last question, Peter. Go ahead. Um, so these bills do not have expiration dates, so they will continue to be law unless a future legislature decides to repeal them. So they're they're permanent, but knowing that you know any law can be repealed by the legislature. But all right, any other questions? This is your chance. Um, looks like uh, you all have some good questions and. Um, I think we're just going to continue uh, staying in communication with all of you, uh, and you're welcome to stay in communication with us. Uh, thank you for your support. It really is making a big difference. And the more you uh, reach out to your uh, senators, the better this goes. And then on to the House. Uh, I'm feeling optimistic. I hope you are too. All right, great. Uh, we're going to sign off unless anyone else has a last minute. I'm just looking. I'm refreshing. Nope, no questions. All right, we're going to sign off. Thank you Thank all for you joining everybody. us. Look for the latest e-blast coming soon when we know more information. Thanks for attending.